Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the pulsating heartbeat of innovation and excellence as we step once again into the scintillating stage of HP Unplugged. I am Sudeep Tobasak, your navigator through the boundless seas of inspiration and brilliance in the corporate cosmos. Today, it is not merely an occasion. It is an honor, a privilege beyond measure. We find ourselves in the presence of a luminary, a maestro of the industry, none other than our distinguished Director Marketing, Shri Amit Garg. In the vast expanse of corporate eminence and visionary prowess, Shri Garg's remarkable journey serves as an enduring testament to leadership. A journey that has unfolded over 37 years in the intricate tapestry of oil and gas industry. Join us as we embark on a voyage peeling back the layers of illustrious career and delving into the profound depths of his strategic foresight. Buckle up for today's exploration is not just conversation, it is an odyssey through the corridors of expertise and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts as we unravel the narrative of excellence with Sri Amit Garg, our Director of Marketing. Sir, uh, welcome to uh, HP Unplugged. Uh, we are really, truly privileged to have you as our uh, fourth guest in uh, HP Unplugged. And uh, we, uh, we are really enriched with your uh, 37 years of experience you have in the oil and gas industry. And uh, you, have been, you have served as the full-time director of uh, Indrapas Gas Limited uh, and a nominee director with uh, Maharashtra uh, Natural Gas Limited. So you have handled a, a plethora of activities in the, in the marketing sector of uh, oil and gas sector. So sir, we wanted to know about your uh, vision for uh, HPCL and uh, how they align with this uh, ever, involving, ever evolving dynamics of the industry, sir. Yeah, so thank you very much for having me here. It's a great pleasure and I was looking forward to interact thank with sir. you. So the journey so far has been very, very rewarding and I mean, I've gone through various roles and various geographies and it gave me a chance to learn a lot along the way from everyone around me. And the vision I carry for HPCL and for all of us is that we need to be the market leaders in the energy space. I mean, it's a simple one line uh, thing which uh, helps me perform the way and all of us together. So, because see, the market is changing a lot and energy needs are a lot for uh, people in our country. And I think whatever be the source of mobility or the source of power for the industry or for lighting up uh, kitchens and homes, we should have that energy with us. And that takes care of the transition which is coming in and it takes care of the core that we are presently moving in. So I think uh, the vision is to be the preferred marketeer where people would like to come and experience and that is what I see for ourselves. Uh, thank you, sir, for uh, putting it in a very nice way that uh, what our strategy should be in a very one line for the people in the field to understand. Uh, so now coming to the close of the quarter uh, and uh, to the close of the year, uh, we have had a very stupendous, uh, stupendous performance in this year. So uh, how do you foresee that uh, this year coming to be at the end? Well, I have to begin by saying that I need to compliment everyone in the organization for what uh, they have done in the last one year. And it really makes me a very proud person sitting here and seeing so much of uh, success along the way in the last one year. I mean, our refineries have done well and financially the three quarters have been super great so far. And marketing has been like uh, fantabulous. From the journey which we started one year ago, of bouncing back. Today the whole world is looking like us, I mean what these guys have done. So even as we talk to you today for this period April and part of February, we are the industry leaders in terms of growth for overall marketing. Okay. And that was a vision where we started our 2023 to achieve growth leadership in the market. And at that time we were still bouncing back for the effect of 2022's and so many other challenges that we had in hand and our people really rose to the occasion. What they did was 
superlative by any standards and across I mean our MSHSD story I mean which is the bulk of what we sell and that's the face of the organization our retail outlets we are a number one in MS and we are number one in diesel then uh, LPG we are far far ahead of the competition almost uh, growing at double the rate uh, to the nearest competitor that we have ATF is like miles above the rest and I mean the teams have really done what they wanted to do and uh, the success mantra has been simple I mean you need to have a purpose in mind you need to understand what I am here for what I stand for and the results will come automatically so many new things have been done in the last one year I mean the way we look at our competition the way we look at our outlets the way we look at ourselves it has changed completely and the reason I would simply attribute is to the power of the will that we are the power of the people that we have so uh, they have really rose to the occasion and I am proud of each one of them so yes it has been a great year so far and as we go ahead the fourth quarter which you alluded to looks like we are on firm ground we should be closing this year as an all-time high number for marketing and a uh, lot many things are being done continuously by the field. I mean, uh, recently retail has taken upon itself a new initiative that all of them, everyone in the region and many people from the zone, they're spending 48 hours at the outlet. I mean, something that has never been attempted so far. And when you say 48 hours, it means you will practically not leave the outlet for 48 hours. So for example, if you enter at 1 p.m. today, so you'll be only coming out of the outlet at 1 p.m. day after. Okay. And the idea behind is that most of the time, we think we know our customers. We think what happens at a retail outlet. We think we assume that we know everything about the market or the catchment area or what happens at a retail outlet. But the sample size on most of the occasions is just one or two people. Mm. So here it gives an opportunity to our officers that they are hardcore at the forecourt with the CSAs, with the dealer. And as I talk about dealers and CSAs, I mean, on them lies our success. Mm. I mean, we are people who are dependent on our network. We don't normally sell directly to our people. So if we are dependent on a channel, on a network, on a partner who is de on whose or, or whom depends our success, then we really need to understand that person well. And this will give our people a chance to reach out to our dealers, understand their challenges, understand what they normally say and we do not agree to them most of the times, and the challenges of the CSAs. Mm -hmm. Something as basic as free air. Mm -hmm. As an officer of the company, I am after my a network dealer that a free air has to be there but then what are the challenges around that mm. I mean a person is standing in sun rain and water and I mean I mean all kind of elements of nature are there so this will give us a chance to understand our core mm. a little more than what we have understood so far and the kind of feedback that we have been getting from our RMs and zonal heads I mean it really fills my heart with so much of happiness because what have been talking about all through last one year these people, these officers are experiencing it at the forecourt. So I'm really happy for that. And many things are lined up. I mean, we are also planning to launch you now HP Club in a new avatar. Okay. So it will be called as HP Club First. Okay. And maybe we'll talk about it more a little later. So yes, the fourth quarter looks stunning as of now. And the whole marketing team is well poised and geared to give an uh, unparalleled result and I'll keep my fingers crossed and my belief in my people is complete so I have no issues around that. Thank you sir and uh, we are really really looking forward to this great performance this year uh, and that uh, great initiative that you have taken to uh, for you know spending 48 hours at the retail outlet which will really let us understand our customers. Uh, so now sir talking about uh, the challenges and the opportunities that are coming in our market so uh, what do you foresee are the major uh, challenges that uh, that are coming in our market and uh, what are the opportunities that are there and how do we you know m mitigate the challenges and capitalize on the opportunities well i mean that's really really important at this point in time because 
the whole country is now waiting to explode in terms of growth already we have seen that the last year the economy bounced back yeah. people bounced back there's a lot of consumption and people just want to go out and spend a good day i mean with their families so and so are the industries and everywhere i mean we see a lot of growth and happiness all around and i think for our sector for the hydrocarbons while we keep talking about a lot of challenges in terms of the new energy my own personal take on that is we are still an energy starved country mm. we are a country with a huge middle class which is uh, booming day by day and they have aspirations and to fulfill those aspirations you need energy in all forms mm. so while the rest of the world may go in one direction after say maybe 5 10 8 or 12 years for us in our country we are going to grow for at least 20 more years so we need to be very very focused on our core and at the same time be there working day and night to look for new ways of reaching out to our customers to give them the energy they wish for for example a lot is talked about evs yes but then every morning newspaper you will read conflicting stories about evs one would say the sales are now going down the other would say the sales are booming but yes these are alternate sources of energy and like i mentioned for a energy starved country like ours all energy forms are welcome and we have play for all so as hpcl i think we being an energy company now we should continue to make available all energy sources as per the demands of the customers and maybe also since we have a lovely r&d at uh, bangalore i mean they do a fabulous job every single day they are also working in various areas which would cater to the needs of the different energy needs of future so i think uh, if you ask me we should parallelly be working on our core which is the fossil fuel business as we refer to and also at the t- uh, same time investing in a big way in the new energy space and practically we are there everywhere Yes. So we are uh, doing very well on the green hydrogen plant. Hopefully by next month we should have our own plant up at uh, Vizag. Then we are already in a big way in the EV space and we intend to put up 5000 uh, EV charging yes. stations at our outlets. The CNG business of the uh, gas business also is like a big opportunity and we have had a uh, new GS which have come to us. So I think we are very well poised to take care of all the energy needs. Okay. So challenges when you mentioned they are not in terms of the growth. The challenges for us would be more in terms of how to service our customers. I've always believed that our products are still more or less kind of commodities. Mm. So the any differentiation that you have to create will be around people or around the services. so it's and i submit in one word as customer experience the only way you can make a difference to the people of this age is to give them a unique experience and i would also term it something less addictive because petrol will not make you addictive furnace oil will not make you addictive to hpcl but the experience they have at each of the touch points will make them addictive to hpcl and that is what i have in my mind that we need to differentiate ourselves in the way we reach out to people in the way we service them and that's a challenge okay because that calls for personal sacrifices yes every hour every minute and we are talking of millions of touch points today millions of experiences every day and you need to be consistent and uniform across the organization for that addiction to set in in a positive way obviously yes so that's the biggest challenge i think we have to align everyone in the company as well as outside because again the challenge we have is we don't serve our customers directly mm. usually we serve them through through our intermediates yes. so they have to be as good i mean we go to a restaurant and the server who is serving you you rate the restaurant on Based the on basis that. of your experience with the server and people rate us on the basis of the experience they have at the forecourt mm. when the delivery man goes with the cylinder when we refuel an aircraft mm. so that's the experience and that has to be world class 
so we need to work a lot with the people who deliver these services to our customers and that is the challenge we need to keep in our mind every single hour so nice to you know uh, know that the you are very you have a very people centric uh, approach and uh, you want to make the customer experience great now coming to that questions a further uh, build up on that is uh, we know that you have a very never say die attitude and uh, we have heard about you in in various forums on that so just coming into it that how do you uh, envision uh, instilling that uh, never say die attitude in uh, across the corporation in uh, every layer and every uh, level of Uh, or uh, in our organization in in the offices sir well i again i mean like most of the things i oversimplify them and i think i would put it here also in one word you have to find your own moon okay and by this moon i mean your own mission your own purpose and obviously that has to be part of the larger purpose of the organization to serve our customers and grow and all that so if you are able to find a purpose then the challenges do not look like big enough i mean then everything becomes achievable and also when you say never say never die attitude it's also about not uh, really be concerned a lot about the failures along the way mm. i've always uh, told my teams wherever in whatever form it's okay to make a mistake it's okay to err uh, i mean that's completely all right and i think we are a part of an organization and we need to be very proud about it that our leadership has never ever i mean stopped people from experimenting they have always seen any mistake from the lens of the intent yes. if the intent is good i mean it's okay to make a mistake here and there mm-hmm. but the purpose has to be very very specific it has to be very very noble and it has to be something very very close to the heart So if that happens the never say never day a uh, die attitude comes automatically it's not something that you think about so i think with the little bit of risk taking ability that everyone should have and again for a reason not without a reason this attitude will take you places we are in a intensely competitive market and for every single liter of sale at least 5 to 6 players are fighting at every point in time mm. and we have to ensure i mean for me howsoever absurd it may look but for me the vision also is or the aspiration if i may say that every single customer of this country should come to us okay i mean that's possible in a way, possible in a way yes. i mean if one customer decides to give me i mean overlook me and go beyond my outlet i need to take a pause and understand which need of that customer i am not able to fulfill mm. when he drove past my outlet what was the thought in her mind why she chose to go to the next outlet mm. so is there something which i am not able to fulfill mm. is that something more that i can do so if you ask me that is the attitude all of us need to carry we need to leverage all our capabilities all our assets to the fullest so while that statement of every customer driving into your outlet may not be correct i mean practically it may not be possible but the attitude should be like that mm. that we need to get everyone into our fold come what may correct and not by the pricing not by giving discounts but by giving a unique experience and i also firmly believe that any company any product any sector across the globe the leader commands a market share of more than 50% mm. the definition of leader for me is a more than a 50% market share and also i mean we have so many studies to go through that the premium market is almost 20% of the market okay in any product segment there are at least about 20% of the people who are looking for premium products superior products in terms of the experience again mm. and today when we uh, go through the various reports we find that in every segment and product the premium category is growing more than the uh, category mm. below that correct and i mean even when we go to movies 
you know the first stand which gets filled up the premium one. is the premium the balcony or balcony. whatever you was to yeah. call it so which tells me that the issue is not about pricing right. the issue is not about being l1 yeah, somewhere it will matter and somewhere you need to be l1 i mean in government tenders public tenders but it's much beyond l1 so with that approach in mind i mean the whole canvas for me is open mm. so everybody who is driving who has a industry who has a kitchen is my customer and that's the way i need to look at my business yeah that that's a great uh, attitude sir and i am sure that everybody in hpcl is now listening to it and uh, they will try to imbibe it in their uh, fabric and uh, perform according to your wishes so sir uh, now coming to uh, communication communication is a very uh, important aspect of uh, any uh, especially in marketing so uh, you have been an exceptional uh, communicator and uh, we have heard you in different forums in various speeches so uh, how do you believe that effective communication plays a role in representing hpcl in the industry and what key messages would you like to convey to our uh, stakeholders well so i may not agree to some parts of your statement in terms of being a great communicator but surely i can tell you that i speak from my heart and i think once you do that anything that you do becomes effective people because they value your intent and not the words which you are using they see the passion behind what is being shared with them and not whether the grammar is correct or not so i think to be a great communicator you need to first be very very confident of yourself and that's a message which i would like to share with everyone in the field because you also brought in the element of industry yeah. meetings and uh, those kind of challenges that our people sometimes face be very very confident of yourself because you are representing a world class company i mean this logo itself is enough to give you any kind of confidence that you can ever ask for with that confidence when you go and reach out to people the communication will become effective whatever you will say will become more meaningful mm. and i think we in hbcl need to be a little more mindful about the fact that we need not be meek followers when we are in a group of people it's time that we take charge it's time that we lead them it's time that the world follows us and for that to happen the first thing is believe in yourself okay. go fully prepared for any meeting the number should not be on paper they should be in your mind using them as and when you wish them to use mm -hmm. and carry a lot of confidence with you and i'm saying that again and again because our people sometimes they prefer to remain in the background they want to be silent observers they don't want to share their opinions my request to each one of you would be share your opinion in a very positive manner you need not rebel you need not shout but you must carry your opinion that's why it's supposed to be an industry meeting yes. a meeting of minds and thoughts of 3 4 5 6 people so if we prefer to remain quiet the the mighty winds even if you don't like it yes. so go all out believe in yourself be bold be courageous and have a very strong conviction and i think if all that happens and the best part is all these qualities that i have mentioned our people have it in abundance only they make a choice of not talking or not speaking at the right time and i am now asking each one of you to do that from now on from today so yes i think communication definitely makes it it has it will be very very important for people to just communicate you just share your thoughts and so that people start paying attention to you right and sir. communication is not just to prove a point yes. not only in the industry meetings to tell you that you are superior no no we are just one of them as far as the meeting goes mm. communication is also what you do to your team members mm. have a conviction have a purpose it's not about the usage of words or which language you want to talk to any language for that purpose is good enough any way you put across your points is good enough but do you have a purpose do you have and also 
you need to have a benefit statement for all the stakeholders. Remember that people come to you because they want something good for them. Correct. So always remember why is the other person here with me? Be it any kind of meeting, any kind of forum, gathering, conference, remember the purpose of the other party. So there has to be an element of benefit statement for all the stakeholders and then they will listen to you intently. And that's more important when we communicate with our customers in case of INC, when we communicate with our distributors like for LPG and our dealers for MSHSD outlets because they are constantly looking up to you. And our sales officer is the only connect journey they have with the company. She is the mouthpiece of the organization. So every word that comes out of her mouth is actually the word of the CFD for them. Mm. So people need to understand when they are talking to people. So communication within the peers is the simplest part. When you are communicating to your dealers, make them relevant in your communication and then they will pay attention to you. When you are talking to CSAs, I mean, you really can't be teaching a, a master's class or an MBA class to them. You'll have to understand their pain. And once you do that, they will do everything that you wish them to do. Because you're only asking them to serve customers, nothing more. Mm. So communication always should understand what brings us together in this particular forum. And then the communication will be powerful. So yeah, that is something I thought I'll share with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving confidence to all the employees at the field. Um, at different levels to uh, go and communicate freely and uh, express themselves. Now sir, coming uh, to the personal side of yours, like uh, we, uh, everybody knows you as Director Marketing, but as a person, uh, how you are and what you do as a, in your free time, uh, what kind of music you listen to, we know that you have a go-to playlist also, so mm -hmm. I've heard from others, so just uh, wanted to uh, venture into that, that uh, what kind of music the, uh, sir you like and uh, any other hobby that you have. Okay, so I think that's uh, very important for me to talk about because for me the definition of me time, personal space is very, very different. Okay. When things go the way they should go and I always have a purpose of the role I am in, that makes me very happy. So with all the different kind of stress and other things that you have, I never feel stressed because of work. So I find peace even in the midst of a whole commotion. Because I know that the purpose for which we are here in is getting served in a way and then I'm happy. But yes, I do have my so-called private moments, my own personal time. And when I go home and sit in one corner of my house and I think that's the time I love to spend. I'm into music a lot, hearing part, just the hear, listening part of it, and if I may say. And the genre you said, I mean, I'm into all kinds of genres, any music. I mean, I am as comfortable with Calm Down and with Unstoppable by okay. Sia <laughs> nice. and uh, I mean all or uh, okay. Swift Taylor for that matter. Okay. But one or the latest, I mean, I'm for the last couple of years, I've been listening to Ariji Singh very intently okay. and uh, I mean, I would like to hum them once in a while. Okay. So that's the singing or the song part of it. But I think it's also about reading a lot. You need to be always abreast of what's happening around you. Right. And I mean, people know me that uh, many a times a question is asked from me about the work-life balance. And I think in today's day, uh, times, work-life is like all intermingled. Mm. So there are no distinct lines of differentiating between the two. And technology has been able to provide us with that help that we can do a lot of things from both sides of the spectrum and it's easy it's mm. to do that. So for me, that conflict of work life is not there at all. And I also personally believe that the kind of uh, roles that we are in, in our organization, the kind of empowerment that we have for our officers, they are here to deliver. They are here to uh, manifest their own aspirations in due course of time. They would like to lead this company when the right time comes. And for that to happen, you will need to make choices in your life. It's about making a choice. It's not about compromising. Yeah. One is never supposed to compromise between this and that. It's about making a choice when it is needed. 
and people need to make that choice now mm. and once you are able to do that effectively for your own self me time office time fun time it's never a confusion in the mind and for all of us as humans fun is as integral to our being as anything else so if we forget the fun time i mean then we are not there i mean why are we even breathing yeah. so but the definition of fun also changes again i mean we are part of an organization where the company itself will create so many fun moments so one has to make the most of them so that would be my message that if you really need to be successful give yourself good time read a lot do whatever makes you happy and give your best to the organization sure sir i think that message will go down to everyone uh, sir now coming to the family part of your sir you are uh, you, your being is surrounded by the love of and energy of your wife and two daughters and uh, so you have wonderful women in your life so how has that affected your uh, you know positively in your personal growth and the way you approach the challenges well so one is that i get inspired by them every single day i mean what my wife does for all of us is simply out of this world and i've gone through many personal challenges if there is one person whom i can attribute my existence today i mean beside god and my parents is my wife she has taken such good care of all three of us that i could actually give all the time that i have to the role i am in and so my existence my the reason i am breathing today is all attributable to her and both my daughters i mean they are the most uh, tough critics that you have in your okay. life <laughs> and one small mistake okay and i mean they'll tear you apart okay so that's the way they are okay and they have done very well in their lives and they are doing a fab job and is spending any time with them is just fun okay which i look forward to thank you very much sir for uh, for this brilliant interview and uh, giving your message to everyone and coming to the show uh, if you would like to give a final message uh, to all of us uh, as the year is ending to all all the officers across the field so i would request you to give one message to everyone yeah surely i would use this opportunity and again i would uh, put it in very simple terms all of us need to worry about three a's and those are be aware of what you are your surroundings your market anything i mean being aware of everything around you and then the next a is for acknowledge acknowledge if there is a problem mm-hmm. if there is something that needs to be done if there is something not happening the way you wish or the good which is happening so acknowledge most of the time even if we are aware of things we don't acknowledge mm. so that acknowledgement part is very very critical if we are not aware then the problem is much serious mm. so be aware acknowledge and then act yeah. so if you do this over and over again you will excel in everything you do and also we wish to be a great company and for me the definition of great comes from three p's and how is that the first is people for any great company it's the people and the people has two components our own people our employees and the customers so if you have the best in class people ready to give everything for the other people which is the customers yeah, that would be making of a great company the second p i talk is about the product or sales part of it or the marketing part of it have something very unique and go all out sell as much as you can and that is only what will make you a great company and the third p without which nothing would survive is profits okay. never lose sight of that so that's my message to everyone today thank you sir thank you once again for coming to the show thank you very much ladies and gentlemen as we bring this insightful episode of hp unplugged to a close with director marketing shri amit garg we extend our sincere appreciation for his valuable perspectives on the marketing landscape in the oil and gas sector 
Shri Garg, your expertise and vision have truly enriched our understanding of the industry. Dear viewers, your feedback is invaluable to us. It helps us improve and tailor our content to meet your expectations. We invite you to share your thoughts and suggestions at prcc at the rate hpcl.in. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Namaskar.